Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode C, Operator Overloading. We already touched on operator overloading in the past episode about traits, since it is implemented uh, with uh, traits in Rust. And uh, in Python, you know them from those uh, Dunder functions like Dunder add, Dunder mull, and uh, all the others to overload operators. However, this is not possible for primitive types in Python. In Rust, this is much more flexible. You actually get to do this there. I prepared some code to look into this. So hop over to the code. I only have the Rust example code because the overloading in Python is fairly straightforward. There's not too much uh, to explain. Now, some more things about um, traits that we used. So here we use uh, again the derive attribute. The debug is already known. And uh, um, here we also derive a clone. So this allows for our minimal struct uh, called my string that only holds a string to be um, cloned or copied in the memory, which will be useful when we uh, do things to it. Now below here, also very interesting, we implemented the display trait. So we up here we import the standard format module and uh, we implement the display trait for our string. This means we can use those curly braces here to format our string in string formatting and that uh, makes it easier to use in the long run. So it becomes uh, more similar to the use of a normal string. The first operation over operator overloading we implement is uh, the operation add of a normal regular string to our my string. This will output uh, a my string. And uh, yeah, as we already did in the last episode, we implement the add to the right hand side of the string. We added a print line to show what's going on. And uh, below here, we are concatenating those. Uh, two strings with the format macro. In this case, it's probably not needed because this is actually of type string and this is of type string. We could actually use the existing overloaded operator plus for those two. But further down, as you can see here, I've implemented uh, adding i32, so an integer, to my string. And here the formatting makes sense because we have to convert the right-hand side i32 which will end up here in the format macro to create the concatenation of an integer to our string. And further down, we can see that the code allows to also implement the addition of a my string for an i32. So I can actually now call a primitive uh, number, basically, add a string, a my string to it, and it will become a concatenated a longer string. So the code stays the same, but this is just uh, showing you that you can implement traits in general for uh, normal, simple, basic types. And uh, even further down, I implemented the multiplication operator. This means that we get to use it like in Python. So if I multiply my string, here's the operation multiplication with an i32. So if we multiply the string, it is simply multiplied, repeated n times as a, a string. And uh, to implement this, Right here, I used certain tricks in uh, this block and uh, they need a bit more explanation. So I'll set up my Vim to uh, be able to do that. Give me a few seconds. All right. So on the bottom, here we have our implementation of the multiplication and uh, the reason that I'm showing you the top here is uh, the import of a trait. 
So let's start with uh, the code. The idea is to multiply a string. So if we now uh, open um, a Python shell on the left, and we have a string called uh, a b, and we multiply it by five, it will actually uh, make us a string that has five times a b in it. If I do the same with a negative number, it will uh, be an empty string and uh, with zero as well. And just once we'll have it only once. And in order to mimic this behavior, the, we implemented the, the multiplication in the same way. So we have the my string type. We get an integer as the right hand side operation for the multiplication. And in order to do this in a hopefully efficient way, we compute the capacity's length needed to create the, the string in the end. And uh, this means we have to figure out if the right hand side passed to the multiplication is actually a positive number or not. If it is, we uh, use it as the size necessary to initialize the capacity. If not, we simply give it a zero and we don't need any uh, string with capacity. And instead of using a string new, we use the with capacity uh, operation to tell it right away, oh, we will need a certain amount of space at least for our string to come in. Then we take the inner string of our my string struct. So here you can see the self zero is referencing to our member string up here. Get the length of it multiplied by the right hand side operator or by zero, depending on if it's negative or not. And uh, after that, we write in a loop. So here we have a loop that starts at zero, goes all the way up to right hand side. And uh, we write into our temporary string that has enough capacity to hold this with the right, right underscore string method, our own string, self uh, zero. And uh, this operation is uh, returning a result. We have to handle it. It uh, can potentially fail to write to the string because you run out of memory or uh, another situation coming up while you're writing. Since we don't expect to run out of memory because it needs to be on a modern computer uh, longer than uh, gigabytes even, we can actually just terminate with uh, panic if we run into this. That's why I use expect with a string that explains what uh, happened in uh, this case. And once we're done writing to our temporary string, we initialize a new my string instance with this temporary string, which will then be the output coming out of the multiplication. Very important to note, in this line, we are using the string variable with the right string method. And this is only available when, at the very top, you can see, when we import um, this line to bring the trait into scope. So that's a thing that is important about traits in Rust. If you don't import them into your scope, the system will not know about them, and then you cannot use them. In order to demonstrate this, I will now re make a comment out of this line. So we go to line number two. We comment this out. Then we hop over to the Python thing, cancel it. Then we run the Rust compiler on our operator overloading. And the compiler will actually tell us exactly what is happening and what we should do. So it uh, tells us that uh, it didn't find the method right string. So we are using it here remember, for uh, the standard string struct, and uh, that is true. And then it explains again in which line and where we are. And in the help, it actually is very helpful because it tells us what we should do. So perhaps add use for it, and it knows that we are probably looking for this standard format write trait that will give us this functionality. So if we now add the functionality into our application. Mm. 
the Rust compiler will stop complaining. On the right, I scroll down to the main section of the code. And now let's run the code to see if uh, it's doing what we expect it to do. We have uh, the output of all our operators being called. So here it uh, explains that we called the mystring add bar. And uh, below I have also written out in the print line what's happening. So we foo plus bar equals uh, foo bar. And uh, you can see here that because we implemented the display formatting, we get to use only the curly braces to output uh, our mystring. And the reason is up here, you can see implement uh, display for my string is uh, making that happen and uh, we can keep going the my string add adds a negative number so this adds up being foo minus 12 is foo dash 12 as a string and the inverse works too so we take a normal integer uh, add a uh, to 100 we end up with a string that is 100 foo you can see that here i have the integer plus my my string then we mimicked the functionality of uh, python uh, strings so we have the my string that get multiplied by a negative number and this will be an empty string so we have uh, no output here and uh, we do it with a positive number, it will repeat the string 12 times. So here we have uh, foo 12 times. And uh, an important thing that we implemented at the top for our my string is uh, the cloning. So I create this uh, one my string instance up here. But after the operations of the addition, since we implemented everything uh, just with a self and not a reference, they get uh, consumed. And uh, therefore, I have to, if I want to use it multiple times, make a copy every single time I do. So that's not very efficient, but the uh, easiest way to show it. That's uh, why I chose to use the my string, clone it, and then use on the clone or the copy of it, um, the operator, which is basically just uh, syntax uh, sugar to call the function, right? And this is done on every single line to not run into a compiler problem. I can uh, show you what happens if we do not clone. It will uh, complain. So let's suppose we remove it only for those um, two lines. And uh, we write it. We hop over to the Rust compiler. And it will tell us uh, value is used here after move because it moves uh, into the function that does the add operation for us. Therefore, we have to use the clone. So that's yet another uh, interesting derive trait that you can uh, do for your structs if you need to be able to clone your elements. Thanks for watching. Coming up next, next on the From Python to Rust series will be files.